Good morning, everyone. It's Rick. It is December the 11th, 2013. It's a Monday. If you need to reach me, my email is rick0327 at me.com. Uh, please, it's child support is very, very hard, very frustrating. And I only have the energy for that. <laughs> it's a lot of energy, by the way. But I, I, uh, I do not do custody uh, and any other type of stuff like traffic tickets or, you know, jailed loved ones. I'm sorry. I just don't have the energy. This, this takes up a lot of my time. Uh, I spend all day answering emails from people who um, subscribe to me and who have made a donation. And I'm very busy quite frankly. Um, so I, I I don't have the time to answer all these emails. Okay, I try to because I am sympathetic, uh, but I just can't do it. All right, so uh, what you're looking at here is uh, how to respond when your paperwork for dismissal is dismissed by the court. Now, what we're dealing with is because I know I figured this stuff out. A while ago while dealing with it on my own and it's nothing but a fraud okay but we can't come out and call it a fraud because they'll get all defensive uh, it doesn't get you anywhere okay so you're better off just using uh, you know the Constitution you know the facts evidence uh, the federal rules any rules that you can use in your favor, um, local state rules, local, you know, anything that you can use in your favor, uh, case laws, um, because uh, there's nothing they can do to prove that you caused somebody some type of injury. Now, the requirement for Title 4D, which is really why you're in, in these uh, child support courts, is someone must be receiving public assistance. That's it. If somebody's not receiving public assistance, you should not be in the court. Okay, and I figured this out a long time ago. And what they're famous for is they just ignore us whenever we point this out, or whenever I point it out. Okay, but there are some case laws out there that can support this claim. Now, what you're really dealing with is we're really not in child support court. We're really in welfare recoupment court. Really, it's it's, it's uh, an administrative court, and it's under the guise, which we could call fraud, but we're not. We're going to call it a guise of child support. Now we have people being jailed by these by these uh, these administrative courts, and because it's such a, a cooperative effort by all the courts and the judges and everybody involved because they are all bar members they're all lawyers and the, the most frustrating thing that I've been dealing with because I'm you know every time one of my subscribers and donors uh, you know something gets rejected or dismissed it's it's <laughs> it's like I'm being rejected and dismissed okay and I know that we're doing the right thing, and I know that my paperwork is strong. It's just that these people, they, they, they cover for each other. And I dealt with it myself when I filed uh, in federal court uh, over two years ago. And I was stonewalled. Okay? So these people were all in on it. But you still, you know, if you, if you, if you put it on paper, and, and they, they can ignore it, but they can't ignore it because it's on paper. Now, if you submit to them, showing to them, like, oh, by the way, um, this is not for child support. This is for a welfare recoupment. And let me show you, okay? What we have here is um, a case, Jones versus State. Now, what they do here, now this is from uh, Google Scholar, great tool. Okay, and what they said here was, they cite this case, this case is a strong case, Maynard versus Williams, 
it's a, uh, a court of appeals, federal court of appeals case. And what it says here is um, uh, what happened was these uh, parents were trying to sue the child support agency for violating their rights because they were not receiving their child support. Because what happened was uh, I, I, I suspect that the child support agencies were not successful in finding any money. Uh, that's why they, they love going after, they, they broadened the, the, uh, the scope, if you want to call it that, a uh, requirement for child support. It went from people receiving welfare and they went after people like me and all the rest of you people out there that work for a living or receiving some type of a pension. They love the military guys. They love you guys. They love people like me, retired police, firemen, anybody receiving some type of a state pension. They love us because there are all these pensions and, and uh, uh, the, the veteran uh, pensions and, and benefits. They all cooperate with the child support people, sadly. And when you try to, and you try to explain it to them, they don't want to hear it, okay? So like if you were to try to explain to the veterans or any pension or your employer even, that like, listen, this is this doesn't affect me because my my uh, the, the mother of my child does not receive welfare, and forget about all the other stuff, you know, the fake court order and and all this other stuff. Uh, very simple things like you know the the requirement is somebody has to be receiving welfare and the money is not going to the child it is welfare recoupment okay so i'll show you here uh all right there's no well here what they're saying is is that uh yeah Family provision of child care rejected private not given a lack of authority statute. I should have. Uh, okay, what what they're saying here is that uh, the person that's being sued is 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 barred under the Eleventh Amendment because uh, um, you oh, here it is holding that USC six fifty four, which addresses collection and support payments confers no private enforcement rights upon custodial parents who receive support payments okay uh and it's because it's, it's not mandatory okay the state is not a mandatory thing so if it's not mandatory why is it mandatory on you okay um there's another case uh cited of course not all right What it is is uh, what they're saying is is that the states are not required to uh, to participate under forty two USC six fifty four, and if they're not if it's not mandatory for the state, it's not mandatory for us. And also, uh, there's a case uh, We Hunt versus Ledbetter, uh, Blessing versus Freestone, where the, the the courts stated that it's not for child support. Oh, it's the, the state benefits. It's, it's These hearings benefits the state. This is the reason why a lot of you are, are dealing with the petitioner being a child support agency or the state is because it's benefiting the state. So how can you be forced to pay child support to benefit the state? It's like being convicted of being, it's like being charged with robbery, but really all you did was went to a red light. They can't do that. You got to be charged, got to be properly charged. And how are they going to prove that your non-payment of support caused the payment of welfare? And by the way, if, if the mother's receiving welfare, remember a lot of you aren't even, the, the mother's not even re uh, receiving welfare. So it's really, really screwed up. So, you know, what I do is, is, is uh, you know, I tell people uh, to tell them from the beginning, where is the injury in fact? Where is the evidence? 
There's no evidence. They never submit any evidence. I can tell you in my case, I went out and spent over $1,000 on these written transcripts. And on the first two pages of the transcript, it would, it would, you know, it would like, you know, say it's right around here. It would say, no evidence submitted. No witnesses questioned. So you have no witness testimony and no evidence. How, how am I being charged with something? How am I being held responsible to pay an order, which is depriving me of my property by an income withholding order? It's all a fraud. Okay, so it's important that you, you should, from the beginning, state to them that I need to see the evidence that I caused an injury in fact. Where is the evidence? And then you can say, is this a Title IV D hearing? And you can say, well, the, the United States Constitution, Blessing versus Freestone, it held that the, 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 the benefit of the child support hearings is the state. Because the money goes to the state, does not go to the mother. Let me see if I can find this case for you guys real fast. There it is. What you do is you find the case, right? And you just, it says how cited. And you see how other courts are citing this case. So what they do is they, they make a summary, uh, you know, they, they summarize what the, the you know, the, the meaning of the decision is. Okay? So we go here. And these are all the courts right here. You see how Congress attended a provision of the question. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're looking for the one. That a state operated its child support program in substantial compliance with Title IV D was not intended to benefit the individual child. You see that, guys? Boom. Boom. That's it. Look at that. And this is a... Uh, I and I. By the way, I, I've uh, included this with my memorandum of law. This is a court of appeals, California, very high court. Okay, so you know uh, we, we talked about the full faith and credit. That well, but well, listen, I'll give you guys an example. How many of you guys have a decision? I just had one guy today reaching out to me. He's got uh, the um, the original order was issued in oh Christ. Whatever is in one state, but the state of Arizona is enforcing it. It's the same thing. So if they're if they're allowed to enforce a judgment from another state, you're allowed to say, well, the court of appeals in California said, boom, said this, because I, you know, we got all these tricksters out there. Um, my man, um, I believe it was Andre upstate, uh, cited a. Uh, Oh, we cited. Well, we all know. A lot of you guys know about the Minnesota uh, decision, not the recent one that just came out. The one that said that the child support is unconstitutional because it violates the separation of powers doctrine. Holmberg versus Holmberg. So these these creeps up in uh, the family court in upstate New York said, "Well, that's uh, Minnesota. We're in New York. You see what they do? That's fraud. That's misinformation." That's throat, that's just what they're doing there is like, oh shit. He he got us. But you know what we're gonna do because he's not a lawyer? We're gonna say, nah, it doesn't count in New York. And just to get that fixed might take a couple of months. It's disgusting what they do, these people, what we're dealing with. It's horrible. But you gotta fight. You have to fight. Okay? So now you see in this case, yeah, and then you could go here and say, How's it cited? All right, nobody cited it. All right, so I've cited, but this is the uh, United States Supreme Court. Okay, and this is the Supreme Court saying that the state benefits, not the parents. So how the hell are you being ordered to come to court, be subjected to stress, subjected to these bullies, that when you try and speak, they ignore you, they speak over you, they threaten you. They treat you with, uh, they treat you like you're stupid, and I know this because it happened to me. Everything that I say to you guys, I have at least 25 hearings that I was subjected to, that I hated going there. You know, I used to go there sometimes. Fucking, I used to go there with a couple of drinks in me. I swear to God, I'd have a couple of drinks in me, and I'd go there, 
just to let and I, and I used to kick ass i don't know what it was it's just i think i prefer him better when i had a couple of drinks in me but i'm not lying because that's how stressed out i would get i'm not suggesting anybody do that by the way i'm just telling you how i dealt with the stress i'm one of these people i do i, I perform very well under stress i've always i always have okay i have like the like things slow down and everything i, I can't explain it but <clears throat> But I know and understand that I had to deal with that all the time. Picture going to to going to deal with this with a with a with a piece of shit support magistrate who has absolutely no respect for you, who's vindictive, and has absolutely no problem uh you know, destroying your life. And she gets mad at you because you're right. I had an objection of mine denied because of the address was wrong on an affidavit of service by a judge. So the judge was like, well, you sent it. I would have dismissed it anyway, but, and it, it was just a technicality, and they can't do that. See, they cannot dismiss for a mistake because you're, you're, not, you're not a lawyer. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're not a legal professional. But, you know, I shouldn't have a case dismissed because I, I sent it to the wrong address. It's, it's ridiculous. But this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with so much trickery, it's unbelievable. But here you go. Here's the case. All right. Blessing versus Freestone. All right. It's good to, you know, learn how to use this, you know, uh, Google Scholar. Okay. So the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, wait, is it the uh, United States Supreme Court? I, yeah, Supreme Court 1997. And it arose from a writ of certiorari in the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Uh, that's the famous Ninth Circuit. That uh, Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys know, I did a video back in February about Donald Trump, about how he read the law, and it got overturned. The, it, the Supreme Court finally uh, enforced his travel ban. I'm not getting political with you guys, but the whole thing was was that these courts, and I was hoping that this was going to happen because I was hoping that uh, Trump was going to expose these judges, and he has. He has said, like, these judges are out of control. So what they were doing was they were taking uh, statements he made while he was running for president and applied it to his travel ban that he filed as an executive order as president of the United States. Those are two separate things. But it's political because these judges are, are, are being political when they're not supposed to be. Anyway, the Supreme Court upheld his travel ban. Right? What do we got? This is uh, December. So 10 months later, see, this is what they do, though. They notice. So they know for 10 months that the travel ban was not going to be in effect because they, they do this on purpose. They do it with us. If you're lucky to prevail like I did. It took me friggin' four years. I lost $143,000. I lost my home. For a little while, my wife and I, we were homeless living in a hotel. Because we moved to Florida for a little while, and I thought, I thought it was over, and they started their collection methods on me again while I was in Florida, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't fight them while living in Florida. I had to move back to New York, my wife and I, we had a move here without having, we had nothing lined up. And my credit got destroyed that I couldn't find an apartment because of my credit was destroyed by these child support people. They want to talk about stress? I, I used to be up half the night wishing I could blink my eyes and it was three or four years from now when I knew everything was going to be okay. Like three or four, I, I wish I could blink my eyes and be where I am right now. But I had to go through it all. And thank God I got lucky. The, the real estate agent was a friend of mine. Uh, to talked to the landlord. The landlord didn't, you know, he's like, listen, I know this guy. I grew up with him. And that's how I got my apartment that I'm living in right now. I caught a break. But for a few days, I was homeless living in a hotel. Oh, forget about it. Guys, I could do a video just on what happened to me. Okay? That's why I, I you know, I feel for everybody. Believe me. All right. So, actually, I started the video. <laughs> We're at 20 minutes. All right, so listen, I'm just going to do the video. I'm telling you guys that the child support is not intended for the children. 
The child support is intended to benefit the state. Here's the case, right? Blessing versus Freestone, okay? How cited. Here's the case that we liked. This is the one that I use. Ben, right? Write it down, guys. Ben versus County of Los Angeles, Court of Appeals, all right? Where it says it's not, it benefits the state, okay? And we can add that to, uh, you know, to uh, our argument. You know, you could say, uh, you know, sir, ma'am, don't say your honor. Please, guys, try to, don't give, don't kiss these assholes. I know, I know you're nervous when you're in there. They don't have any honor. If you had any honor, you wouldn't be there. Okay? They're just perpetrating a fraud. You have to let them know that you know that it's a fraud. Don't call it a fraud, but you know in your mind it's a fraud. You could call it a fraud by the way you verbalize, you, you, why, the way you make your statement. I don't understand the state, the, the, the Supreme Court of the United States and Blessing versus Freestone said that the Title IV-D hearings do not benefit, the money does not go to the child or the, or the custodial parent. The money goes directly to the state for recruitment of welfare. They can't argue with that. They're going to try, but you got to hold your, you know, you got to hold your, uh, you know, hold the fort down, as they say. Okay, you got to stand it. You got to believe in it. I tell people, in the car, practice when you're in your car. Nobody's around. Practice. There's nothing wrong with that. That way, when you're in court, you don't have to worry about stuttering or anything like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with stuttering, but you want to, you, you want to sound like you believe in what you're saying. When I used to go to court, I knew they wanted to arrest me. I used to challenge them. Go ahead, arrest me. I said, I'm going to take it to trial, and you guys have to try and, ex try and explain how you were justified in arresting me. They knew they can't, so I, I, you know, I, I called their bluff. And there's a couple of my videos early on in my videos where you know, I'm fighting with these people. And I have one video... Um, where I'm telling the uh, support man, I go, you do know fraud is a crime, don't you? And I finally, you know, I, you do know fraud is a crime, don't you? You do know fraud, and then finally she responded. They don't expect people to do that, but they knew I had them. I believe in this stuff. So I'm telling you guys that it's true because I used it. Okay? So remember, child support is not... Child support on the Title IV-D is not for the child. It's for the state to recoup welfare. And you could even take it further saying, I don't understand if the mother is not receiving welfare, what am I doing here? If it's for uh, welfare recoupment, where are you recouping this welfare that was not paid to me or my children or the mother or the father? All right, guys. I went on for a while. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. I'm going to do another video tomorrow on this, on the objections. All right. Do the, the presentation. How to respond by written objections. Okay. Because they won't let you speak in court, it's good to get it in on paper. Okay. That way it's stamped. You keep a copy for yourself and it's on the record. Okay. I'm doing it nice and slow. If you guys want to boom, boom, one, two. Wait on a second here. I got the uh, right here on the bottom. I have the notes here. So I'm going to do it slow again. Slide one. Slide two. Slide three. Slide four. Slide five, remember down here, I got notes down here to read. Slide six, slide seven, and that's it. Now remember, I keep telling you guys, deprivation of life, liberty, or property can only occur constitutionally by a judgment by peers. Okay? That's why it's no different if somebody is, you know, facing 25 to life for a murder. 
they're going to, you know, if they, they refuse, you know, a, a plea, aren't they, they, you never see them getting a, a, a summary judgment because they can't. That judge, will, <laughs> that judge will be destroyed on a summary judgment on, on an appeal. They have to be given a, 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 a trial. It's no different, believe it or not, in property. So when these summary judgments, these support orders are being issued, where they're de depriving you of your property, they still have to provide you with a trial by jury. Okay? Remember that. It's very simple. Where is my trial by jury? Well, we don't do it here. Well, uh, then, you're in, then, then this court lacks jurisdiction, and the case must be dismissed. All right? We'll make it very simple. Okay? All right, so listen, I'm going to end the video. I'm sorry I went on for a while, but, you know, it's important to understand that child support under Title 4D, right, 42 U.S.C., 654B, or 3, I think it is, what B, is for the benefit of the state and not the child like they want everybody to believe. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.